Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and thank you for tuning in. This video is a response to Vegan Gains' recent video to Athlean X titled Athlean X uh, Fails to Make Perfect Workouts. Now, I haven't done a training-oriented video in what feels like a good while, so I felt that this was a nice change of pace. I am in no way defending Jeff Cavalier with this video, as I don't really watch uh, Jeff's material enough to hold a position about his content as a whole. Uh, rather, I am just providing my own views and some clarifications on training topics that Richard had discussed, um, as well as sharing some relevant research on the subject. Uh, maybe you will learn something. Uh, Richard's channel is one of only a handful that I actually keep up with to any degree on YouTube. You can watch Richard's video um, for the full context as I won't be splicing in clips. I've linked that video below for your convenience. Now, I agree with Richard that training should be specific to your goals. And this includes, but is not limited to, uh, using the appropriate rep ranges to optimize said goals. Uh, generally speaking, that is. And I will elaborate on this topic in a moment because this will be the main talking point of this video and an area where Richard and I seem to diverge. I also agree with Richard's criticisms on Jeff's use of terminology. For instance, at approximately 4 minutes and 47 seconds in uh, to Richard's video, he featured a clip of Jeff incorrectly using the term overreaching, as Richard explained. I feel the better term for Jeff uh, to have used would have been post-activation potentiation or PAP. And you can search Google for numerous papers and articles on the subject of PAP. Basically, PAP is defined as a phenomenon by which the force exerted by a muscle is increased due to its previous contraction. And since we're on the topic, a way that I've applied PAP in my own training experimentation would be to start with a very heavy set of, say, 95 to 97% of my one rep max. And I would perform only one rep uh, for that set, even if I feel that I have another good rep in the tank. Then I would rest about a minute, while I, and while I am resting, I would reduce the weight to the, on the bar to about 75 to 80% of my one rep max, uh, which would normally net me about 8 to 10 reps. And after that brief rest, I would crank out one or two more sets with the lower weight to failure. Uh, but due to PAP, I typically would get one to two additional reps about, beyond what I would normally get on those sets. And I've also applied PAP to my martial arts training. For example, hitting the heavy bag or the pads uh, for a round while my arms or legs are weighted by resistance bands. Um, and at the end of that grueling round, I would remove the resistance bands during a short rest period and uh, then proceed to hit the bag or pads for a round without the added resistance. And I'd immediately notice that my strikes are both faster and more powerful than normal. But that's enough of an aside. Let's explore rep ranges as they relate to strength and hypertrophy, uh, the focus of this video. Schoenfeld and company published a paper in 2014 which found that both three sets of 10 reps and seven sets of three reps produce similar increases in muscular size. But the 7x3 group experienced superior strength gains. Another paper by Schoenfeld and company published a year later in 2015 demonstrated that both three sets of 8 to 12 reps and three sets of 25 to 35 reps, when taken to failure, can elicit significant increases in muscle growth in well trained young men. However, the 8 to 12 rep group witnessed superior strength adaptations compared to the 25 to 35 rep group. And yet another paper, this time a 2017 meta-analysis, was published by Schoenfeld and company demonstrating once more that maximal strength benefits are obtained from the use of heavy loads, but muscle growth can be achieved across a spectrum of loading ranges, whether light or heavy. Furthermore, a 2018 paper by Fink and company discovered that while performing three sets per exercise with your 20 rep max produced significantly more muscle growth than performing three sets per exercise with your eight rep max, the eight rep max group enjoyed significant gains in strength, whereas the 20 rep max group actually lost 
a little strength. And we see this trend repeat again and again and again in the research. Ad nauseum. So Richard appears to be correct in his assertions going by the current body of data, but this is not to say that higher rep training has no place in a quality strength program either. You just need to program the higher rep work accordingly. So let's explore that concept for a moment. A 2004 paper by Goto and team found that performing a single higher rep set at 50% of your one rep max, which falls in the range of 20 to 25 reps, directly following five heavier sets at 90% of your one rep max, leads to not only greater muscle growth, but also greater increases in one rep max, maximal isokinetic strength, and muscular endurance. And that was compared to lifters who did not perform the additional lighter set, uh, just the heavy five sets at 90% of one rep max. And another paper, this time from 2015 by Aguiar and colleagues, found that trainees who performed a single lightweight set at 20% of their one rep max, which is about 45 to 55 reps, directly before three sets at 75% of their one rep max, built more strength and more muscle than those who did not perform that lighter, pre-exhaustive set. The researchers of that paper theorized that the reason for this is metabolic accumulation induced by the pre-exhaustive lighter set promoting a greater global recruitment of type 2 muscle fibers in the subsequent three sets. And there are other papers such as this one by Goto and colleagues which demonstrates the benefits of combining heavier and lighter work in your training program for improvements in strength, size, and more. Now don't get me wrong, I still recommend a good periodized training program, whether your goal is size, strength, or both. Even that 2004 paper that I had cited had all the participants run a higher rep hypertrophic style training protocol for six weeks prior to the heavier phase. And users of my ebook Beast Mode by Science, which is linked below, will notice that it also features periodization. Though so that particular ebook is more geared toward aesthetics, that said, I do offer other products that focus more so on strength. And here is what one of my customers recently shared about his own strength results after four months of using my ebook Rocket Old School, which is linked below. He gained over 60 pounds on his bench, 75 pounds on his squat, and 85 pounds on his deadlift. And my training programs incorporate numerous research-based concepts, such as the inclusion of the aforementioned lighter sets to optimize a user's results. So do check out my various ebook offerings, all of which are linked below, which can help you achieve results like those seen on my clients pictured here. And hell, use the coupon code TRY20 at checkout to take 20% off any of my ebooks, including the bundle offer, which already saves you $13.90 uh, US. So give them a go and let me know what you think. Anyway, leave your uh, thoughts and comments below and don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful or interesting. Also, subscribe to this channel if you have not already and press that bell button for notifications and check back here weekly. All three avenues will help ensure that you do not miss any new content from me. And check out the video description for links to my products and services as well as my affiliate links such as Amazon and other ways that you can show your support to me and my channel if you genuinely enjoy and get use from what I provide here. With that, I want to thank you all for your support. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.